Downer's leadership was um, short and um, fatal. Downer, Downer vows a fresh start. <laughs> How are you going out there, Curly? Old darling? You are one of the most unctuous, self-righteous people I have come across. Oh, no. Always preaching as though to say that people who don't agree with everything you oh, say no. are somehow racist, bigoted and immoral. <laughs> This is a salmon that actually jumps on the hook for you. In fact, there's three or four of them there, the whole little group of them there. Mr. Speaker. Just Mr. let's remind us who gave us the worst recession in 60 years? Paul Keating. Who gave us the highest unemployment since the Order. Great Depression? Paul Keating. Those who gave us the left. highest current account deficit on record? Paul Keating. Who gave us the highest level of foreign debt since the Great Depression? Paul Keating. Order. Who gave us the highest... Order. Oh, it's all right for him to do it, but it's not all right for me. It's all right for him, but not all right for me. Mr Speaker, we know what he said, and what he said is is the same sort of thing the Shadow Treasurer said before Christmas when he advocated up to... Order. Well, don't be too noisy over there. Yeah. Yeah. Order. The Listen Deputy Leader of the Opposition. You're so macho. You're so macho. Twice you've had a chance to take the Opposition leadership. The first time you rang your friend next to you and offered it to him. This, this time you sat overseas while John got it from Hawk's Nest. <laughs> Now, when I told our caucus last year that you were a low-altitude flyer, Order. I was right, wasn't I? Mr Speaker, my question without notice is to the Prime Minister. Given the fact that bond yields have steadily risen since your appearance on the Late Line program last Wednesday, and given the fact that interest rates on fixed-rate mortgages have already risen, do you now concede, as the Treasurer does, that official interest rates will be moving upward or do you continue to maintain there is no pressure on official interest rates in Australia? The Honourable the Prime Minister. Speaker, it seemed to me that bond yields had moved up all over the world, so the, so the Shadow Treasurer credits me with great influence, I've got to say, to uh, uh, my late line interview must have travelled far and wide to, uh, to have this devastating impact on bond yields. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you. Mr um, Speaker, so uh, I don't think there's any uh, basis uh, for the question other than to display the juvenile qualities of the opposition now seems intent upon presenting uh, with great gusto uh, at uh, each uh, question period and uh, maybe if the coalition was in office there wouldn't be a whole bevy of former leaders on its front bench and deputy leaders. Um, uh, there they sit alone and palely loitering. The Honourable yeah. Member for Honourable Prime Minister. Yeah. Minister. Yeah. Mr Speaker, uh, I can... Uh, the, well, what a lightweight question. One month's numbers. Oh, no. One month's numbers. Oh, no. Mr Speaker, I mean, if this is a new team, well, well, well. Mr well, Speaker, well, well. I suppose he's got his cut his, cut his teeth somewhere and the, the monthly balance of payments uh, release may as well be the start, even if he has uh, exaggerated the influences which are there. He opposed every wage increase since 1983 for the workforce, every single one. That's Member the sort of Australia this Conservative apparatchik believes in. And then, of course, this sort of morbid rhetoric, the sort of small, the, uh, small thrifty shopkeeper gnarlishness with, uh, with uh, the red tape of government spending. So we've got all this anti-government anti spending rhetoric, but in his day he was the big spender. That's right. The big spender. Mr. 28.8 per cent of GDP. I mean, how can you come? Look, John, don't waste your time on me, son. Don't waste your time on me. I've been around. I know you. I know you. I know where the skeletons are in your closet. The Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thanks, thanks, Mr. Acting Speaker. Order. 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 The Leader of the Opposition has the call. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Acting Speaker. I refer the Prime Minister to his hopeless attack on the fight back at um, the press club today. Order. The, leader, asked, the Leader will get to the question. I ask the Prime Minister, if you are so confident about your view of fight back, why won't you call an early election? Because, mate... Because... Order. Order. 
the, the member for Higgins. Mike, Mike, because I want the to do you more. slowly. I want to do you slowly. There's got to be a bit of sport in this for all of us. No, no. There's got to be a bit of sport in this for all of us. And on the psychological battle stakes, we are stripped down and ready to go. Ready to go. And uh, I want to see those ashen face performances. More of them. I want to be encouraged. I want to see you squirm out of this load of rubbish over a period of months. There's going the to be no Aston. easy execution for you. No easy execution for you. You've perpetrated one of, the, one of the great mischiefs on the Australian public with this thing, trying to rip away our social wage, trying to rip away the, the, the Australian the values Aston. which we built in our society for over a century. And if you think I'm going to put you out of your misery quickly, you can think again. The honourable member for Rich, the the deputy leader has. Let a not uh, the, the the shadow treasurer hop up uh, talking about uh, uh, talking about uh, how you know how shocking it is that somebody that actually represents the savings of millions of Australians might dare have a view about these you know godlike practices which go on inside these people who are hearing voices. Mr. Speaker, no, but they're not. I don't think they're intervening. Simple as that. No, no. But they're entitled. No, no. But they're entitled to view. And Mr. Speaker, and so, and so, and so, so by the way, as anybody who's got tuppence worth of brains in observing these donkeys selling down bonds and flogging Pacific Dunlop shares, uh, Mr. Speaker. So, and just Mr. Speaker, on the way uh, about guess who's coming to dinner? Oh, can I just can I just say, but make a point about that little aside, Mr. Speaker? I might ask the Leader of the Opposition, did he have his children on board when he met Kerry Packer for lunch two Thursdays ago? In his guess who's coming to lunch? <laughs> eh? Or was it just you and Kerry? Was it a nice little meeting? Was it a nice little meeting? How did Kerry treat you? Well, well I hope. You know, one Sydney boy to another. One Sydney boy to better he treats me, eh? Yeah? Yeah, good. Good on you, John. <laughs> The Honourable Member for Patterson. I actually knew someone had grey hair. I, I actually knew the Leader of the Opposition before the Liberal Party gave him a makeover in the 80s when he had those Menzian eyebrows, before they gave him the Bugs Bunny teeth, before he used to, when he used to speak without lisping or spitting. I knew him then, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I knew him then. So, Mr Speaker, I don't Order. think, I don't Order. think the, the Opposition ought to go on about the complexion of people here. Because, Mr. Speaker, we do know all about Mr. Speaker ageing. My colleagues and I said, "Where are you going to get round the policy?" We said, "I'll get round the policy." At that stage, we'd had ten minutes of abuse of the government. Ten minutes of abuse, abuse which said that I am despicable and gutless. No, you point, can't have a point, second point go. Of order, point of order. You well, can't we're going have to have a sensible debate on this issue. Order. Pick order. up the policies order. that are there. Yeah. 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 What are you talking about? I mean, you talk about a glass jaw, you get one minute of criticism and you've got to get up to try and take a point of order. Then you said I won't debate you. I've offered you 7.30 tonight, on the 7.30 report tonight. You know I have, and you'll probably squib that. And maybe I might goad you into it. Maybe I might goad you into it. Maybe I might goad you into it. Yes, you believe in families. You arrogantly believe that you can speak for families as if there's something you know about families that the rest of us don't. Yet, yet. You believe you say in families, but you don't believe in family support. You don't believe in payments to low-paid families. You don't believe in a family allowance supplement, additional family payment. You don't believe in Medicare.